Hi, I'm Rob Ringer, and I put this video together to help kickstart your journey into deploying Cortex XDR in your Google Chromebooks, as well as provide you with some tips and tricks that hopefully you find beneficial in helping your deployments be successful. So the agenda we're going to cover is I'm going to go over what Cortex XDR is, any of the dependencies you need to worry about, some early deployment planning that I think will pay off in the long run for you, and then I'm going to walk through the configuration in both the Cortex XDR and the Google Workplace, Workplace portals for you. And then I'm going to load up a Chromebook and show you what that looks like from an end user perspective when Cortex XDR is deployed. And then circle back around to the Cortex XDR portal and show you once the agent's been registered what that looks like there. So Cortex XDR is the world's first extended texture response platform that integrates not only the endpoint, but your network and cloud data together to help stop sophisticated attacks. So what that means is you now have a unified prevention, detection, investigation, and response platform that'll help with your operational efficiency. So if you look at your processes today, what are you doing when you detect an anomaly on the network or in the cloud or on the endpoint? How are you bringing that information together? How are you making it actionable? And how are you able to better secure your network? That's where Cortex XDR really shines. So if we look at the agents, so that we have two different licenses. There's Cortex XDR Prevent and Cortex XDR Pro. Both of them uh, have the same agent install. It's just a license difference. They're both available on the same platforms. Both provide next generation antivirus. Both provide endpoint protection. Where Cortex XDR Pro really comes to shine with its additional capabilities are the detection and response, enhanced data collection. And then when you want to look at leveraging things like managed threat hunting or host insights to be able to provide you with a vulnerability assessment or the capability to do file search and destroy, that's where Cortex XDR Pro is going to be a better fit for your organization. So there's a lot of other benefits that Cortex XDR Pro bring to the table. And I provided a link at the bottom, but if you just search for Cortex uh, XDR licenses features, you'll get the page that comes up. So looking at dependencies, we're going to need some sort of license, either Cortex XDR Prevent or Pro. Either one will be fine for what we're doing. Uh, Google Workspace account with at least a G Suite basic and cloud identity free. And then you're going to need a Chromebook. Uh, any current generation should work. I've tested on both build 85 and 88, um, but it should work on any of the current generation ones. So if we start looking at how do we want our Chromebooks grouped together for better administration and tracking things down, as of uh, Cortex uh, XDR 7.1, there is the ability to use something called an MDM group tag. This attaches a prefix to any of your registered devices through your uh, uh, Google Workspace. Now, why is that important? It allows you to take devices such as Chromebooks that really don't have a host name or that sort of structure that we're used to in like a Windows environment and get some sort of um, intelligence to that. So if you look at what I have down in the bottom left, my learning for fun.net is my root. And then under that, I have uh, the sub tiers, elementary, high and middle schools. You might go a, a little further and actually put the school names under it. But the important part is under the JSON file, I've changed that MDM group tag to match easy all of them. So at the top, under learning for fun.net, I have it as students. Then under elementary, I have it elementary. High school, I have high. And the middle school, I have middle. And that allows me then on the Cortex XDR on the right, that dynamic group, to use that as a filter criteria. And now I can quickly group all my Chromebooks together by where they're located or the students that they're um, using, the students that are using them. So if we jump into the configuration aspect, first thing we need to do is create that agent install file. So we're going to log into your Cortex XDR portal. Once we're there, you're going to navigate to endpoints, endpoint management, and agent installations. You're going to click on create. And then from there, you got to give it a name. And then the most important piece is under the platform to select Android. And we're going to click create. So what that's going to do is kind of create that installation package. What we really care about is the ID field. And that's what we're going to use in Workspace under as the refer ID. So if you don't have the ID filled there in the top right, there's vertical ellipses where you, we can select that. I'm going to walk you through it to get it to show up. Alternatively, you can right click on it 
and then copy the URL. And at the very end, after the refer equal, is where that ID will be as well. So once we've created the agent, we're going to do the Cortex uh, endpoint groups. So same thing. We're essentially we're going to add, go to endpoints, endpoint management, and then endpoint groups. We're going to click Add Group and Create New. It's going to be a drop down that appears. You got to give it a name as well. And then under the selected fields, we're going to go by endpoint name, and then you're going to enter in whatever group tag you want to call. So elementary, higher, middle, or if you want to go by school names or something else that makes sense for your organization, you're going to enter that in and then click the create dynamic group. And you're just going to repeat this for as many groups as you need. And that's it. You're done in the Cortex portal. So now we're going to hop over to Google Workspace. So in Google Workspace, first we have to assign the application. So we're going to log in. From there, we're going to navigate to devices, Chrome, apps, and extensions. And then we're going to select the organizational level we want to install it at. I'm going to go ahead and do it at the root, giving it a generic tag of students, and then show you how we can go down to each level and change that to match. So if it's elementary, middle, or high, or your school name. Uh, but if you want to do it in your lab or somewhere else, just select that level. And then we're going to click on the plus sign in the bottom right and add from Google Play. You're going to search for Cortex XDR and then select the application. Once we've done that, we're going to need to select that application, and then we're going to enter in our information. It's going to be the JSON on the right-hand side. So the key pieces that we need is that refer. That's that ID that I mentioned earlier we got from the installation package. We want to have the MDM auto-registration set to true so that our Chromebooks auto-register once they get that uh, application install. And then the MDM group tag is optional, but I find it very useful just to make it easy to group them together for us. And that's it from a configuration standpoint on Google Workplace. So what I'm going to do now is jump over into my Cortex XDR portal, and I'm going to walk you guys through it. So first, I'm going to go to Endpoints, Endpoint Management, and then Agent Installations. I'm going to go ahead and click on Create. I'm going to call this Ringer Chrome, just for this. I'm going to select Android. And once I do that, I'm going to click Create. And here you see that ID I mentioned. So we're going to want to copy that down because that is what we're going to use later. If that's not there in the top right, you can click on the vertical ellipses and then click on ID. Alternatively, you can right click and do copy download, download link, and it'll be at the end there. So now that we've created that and got the agent ID, what we're going to do is create that group, the endpoint groups. So I have a couple created already. I have my students, which is going to be at my root, and then I have my middle and high. So I'm going to go ahead and create the elementary one since I haven't done that one yet. So I'm going to click on Add Group, Create New, call it uh, Elementary School, and then the Select Field is going to be Endpoint Name, Value is going to be Elementary. And so that's all there is to creating the endpoint group besides clicking Create Dynamic Group. You saw there was a lot of different things that you can group them by. Uh, this is just the easiest for Chromebooks that I've found. And that's it on the Cortex XTR portal. The next thing we're going to do is jump over to the Google Workspace. So now that I'm logged in, I'm going to go to the top left, click on Devices in Chrome, and now I'm going to go down to Apps and Extensions. So this is what I was mentioning, select your level of your organization you want. So I'm going to go ahead and install it in my root. Click on the plus sign, go to Google Play. And then I'm going to search for Cortex XDR. Once that comes up, I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And click the Select button. Now that it's shown up, we'll see that I need to enter the JSON value over here. So that is where I'm going to take those elements I mentioned earlier, and I am going to paste that in. You can see I've taken the refer code from earlier. Uh, auto registration is true. And then students is down here as the default tag. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And now I'm going to go down to my elementary school. I'm just going to replace where it says students with elementary. I'm going to save that. All right, I'm going to do the same thing for high and middle school. You can see it, it gets the roll down so students is in there each time. So I'm going to do high 
And then lastly, I'm going to do middle school. One quick thing I forgot to mention earlier is by default, it doesn't allow install. To automate it, we need to do either force install or force install and pin with force install and pin being uh, what's best practice. So now that I've gone over that, I'm going to jump over to the video of the Chromebook. And we can see the students logging in. Once that takes place, we will see their normal launch application show up and followed by the Cortex XDR agent install. During this time, the Chromebook's going in to check in. This doesn't take more than a minute or so the first time. So when you're pushing those Chromebooks out to students or however you're doing it to start the, the beginning of the school year, this is just a one-time thing. So now that it's checked in, we're going to see that there's a notification in the tray in the bottom right. When we look at that, that's the Cortex XDR agent being installed. Once that's finished, we'll see it down there in the tray in the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and click on it to launch it. We're going to see that it's, it automates the activation process for us. So I don't have to do anything. And then once it's activated, I'm just going to verify it. So I'll go to the top right here in a second. See that the anti malware protection is on. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to click on settings and then go to activation. I can see it is activated and that's where I get the endpoint ID as well with it. So now I have a fully activated Chromebook. So I'm going to jump back over to the Cortex XDR dashboard. Go so back to the dashboard. I'm going to go to my endpoints and I can see that this one based on the users marked as elementary. And then there is that Chromebook ID. So that's why putting those tags in there is so important. We see that it's connected. We see the student that was logged in on that Chromebook. And then if I go over to my endpoint group, we'll see that I now have one member under the elementary. So now I can do my policies and everything else that I want. But that's how easy it is to deploy Cortex XDR in Chromebook. It was just a couple steps, both on the Cortex XDR portal and the Google Workplace portal to get you up and running. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you.